Welcome to the new moon in Capricorn, which waned at 1.35 p.m. on Sunday, January 2nd. Uh, this is our first time being back in the world doing rituals in person. And so I hope that you bear with me in case we make any mistakes. So before we get started, let us call the quarters, uh, prepare our spirits before uh, we do any great work. So let us close our eyes and imagine a brilliant white light glistening above your crown chakra. It's so bright that you can barely look at it. Now envision yourself raising your right hand, taking a hold of a piece of that light and you lower your hand touch your forehead and say, Ot, for thou art. Now see the light following your hand to your heart, touch your heart and say, Malchut. Point your finger to the ground, seeing the light going into the earth. Then take your hand to your right shoulder and as you touch it, say, Vagavura. Then touch your left shoulder, seeing the light travel from the right to the left. And as you touch your left shoulder, say, Va Gadola. Upstretch both arms and say, La Olam. Then lower your hands and say, Amen. It is so. Now we can say that our sacred space has been cleansed. All that have gathered have arrived and prepared themselves for the celebration. Let us anoint ourselves in love, clearing our hearts and minds for the good work ahead. Before we continue further, as is tradition, let us invite the guardians of the watchtowers, gods and goddesses, to lend us their energies and to guard our sacred circle. All hail to the watchtower of the east, the element of air, spirit and intuition, the great eagle. We ask that you join us in our ritual, lending us your powers of discernment for the good work ahead. Guard our sacred circle set outside of time and charge this by your power. We bid hail and welcome to East and Air. All hail to the watchtower of the South, the element of fire, creative energy and will, the great snake, the burning flames of desire. We ask you to join us in our ritual, lending us your powers of vitality and drive for the good work ahead and guard our sacred circles set outside of time. Charges by your power. We bid hail and welcome to South and Fire. To the west, power of the west, the element of water, the power of dreams and emotions, and the gentle dolphin. We ask that you join us in our circle, lending us your power of love for the good work ahead. Guard our sacred circle, set outside of time, and charge it by your power. We bid hail and welcome to west and water. All hail to the watchtower of the north, the element of earth, the power of mother and earth, and the giant buffalo. The power of silence, manifestation of that which we create with our thoughts. We ask you to join us in our ritual, lending us your powers of stability and grounding for the good work ahead. Guard our sacred circles set outside of time and charge it by your power. We bid hail and welcome to north and earth. To the ancients, older versions of ourself, divine mystery, bring together that which is true to our respective paths, helping us to heal the past that has carried negative karma. Spirits of above and spirits below and guardian power within that connects us all. We call it you to be at your strongest with us and to lend us your guidance. 
We look above to seal the height with yud hey vav. We look below to seal the deep with yud vav hey. We look forward to seal the east with hey yud vav. We look backward to seal the west with vav hey yud. We look to the right to seal the south with vav yud hey. We look to the left and seal the north with hey vav and yud. These are the ineffable existences, the spirit of living God, air, water, fire, height, depth, east, west, north, and south. Let all who came not in response to our call, we acknowledge your presence, wishing you well, and ask that you depart now in peace. Let all who have entered our circle be here in perfect love and perfect trust. The circle is now past. Welcome to the new moon in Capricorn, which waned at 1.35 p.m. The moon representing our emotional nature, our inner being, our subconscious dreams, desires, and innermost fears in the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn is feminine cardinal earth. It is the eye use of the zodiac and the harvest. How we have utilized our resources and the result of that work or lack thereof. Ruled by Saturn, the ancient god of sowing and reaping. Capricorn represents obstacles, restrictions, which teaches us discipline. You may note the difference in the stories between a young man coming of age and his parents giving him a car that he had to work on in order to get it running, in order to drive it, versus a young man whose parents gave him a brand new car when he turned 16 that he didn't have to work for at all. The lesson is all too often that we don't appreciate what we didn't have to work for to obtain. Some people have a natural talent that they don't have to do anything to develop and some of them squander it away, while some others spend years in study trying to be only as good. The question becomes, where with both of them be in their golden years? Or where would both of them be in their golden years? The moon in Capricorn is the most practical of environments, able to manipulate every idea or situation and put it to good use. Emotions are not a priority, and this can make a person seem a little cold and unfeeling. But the truth is, they're just about getting on with it. With ninth health energies, the above scenario can become about how much work and discipline one has to put into studying their faith and practices. If I've learned anything over the years, it's that no one will give you all of the answers to everything. But maybe you get lucky enough to get pushed in the right direction and down the correct rabbit hole that has the carrot. This Capricorn moon takes honesty and truth seriously, and the quest for finding our truth can be grueling, to say the least. But the reward is great, because knowledge is power and can be used as a protective shield against all manner of things that exist in the world. As you can see from our blog, this chart is really interesting with all these planets all clumped together like they're snuggling in the cold. Aspecting this new moon is the conjunction with the sun. The trine with Uranus, but I've added these other planets because they're all in the bucket. Venus in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn, and Mercury and Saturn in Aquarius. The conjunction occurs when planets are on the same degree and is considered an intensely unified aspect. The sun representing our outer being and basic character, conscious personality, and our will. Our goals in life, the person we show to the world, with or without the mask we often wear. The sun in Capricorn has a clear and logical view of the world, a no BS kind of energy, serious and disciplined. For some, it's a life of study and teaching others, and for others on the opposite side of the spectrum, life is fun, games, hardships, and terror. And to those who ask why, they can often find no answers. In a universe of one consciousness, we are only as strong as the weakest among us. 
I was telling someone at Yule that you are practicing a craft, whether you believe it, whether you know it or not, just in your thoughts alone. The first book I ever read when beginning this walk, the author cautioned to take the practice of your craft seriously so that you uphold the standard that others before you have tried to maintain. Those who dabble and play with black arts, divinations, etc., with no regard, no knowledge of what they're doing, not only reduce the standard but subject their creation to needless dangers because they don't bother to consider what they're doing. The trine occurs when planets are at 120 degrees and is considered an aspect of ease. Uranus is the planet of change, upsets, ingenuity, and where we see the world through those colored glasses, our sense of independence. As we said earlier, Taurus is raw energy being fixed and earthy. Earth signs are powerful as they contain all of the other three elements, and as we know, fixed signs are more than stable they can be unmovable. Taurus is resistant to change and likes things pretty and in good order. Uranus in Taurus would offer new insight into the world around you, but for the 12th house energies and those psychological issues that keep creeping back, use Uranus's unconventionality and dig deep into what causes the same negative patterns that we keep bringing up in our lives. Maybe study on the Akashic Records and how to access them and do some deep meditation on when those patterns may have started. There is a reason for everything, even this transit. So use it to your advantage, just like Capricorn Sun would encourage you to do. Now, for these other guests in our bucket who don't necessarily have a direct influence on the energy of our moon, but who want to add their opinions into the mix, we may find them helpful. Venus sits in Capricorn with the sun and the moon. Although not a direct transit, Venus has an appreciation for what's traditional here and her loyalty and sense of control can assist us in that spiritual quest for our truth, helping us fit things together. They have to make sense after all, as far as Venus is concerned. Pluto, the planet of transformation, extremes, death, and regeneration, may help in putting things aside that no longer serve your higher self, because being practical Pluto in Capricorn is all about cutting through the BS and exposing the heart of the issue. Then along comes Mercury, the planet of our intellect and mental activity, lending its assistance in categorizing and prioritizing our train of thought and how we arrived at where we were in the first place. In Aquarius, Mercury is impartial and democratic, not leaning on any side, but helping us see the clearer path in the middle. Saturn is the planet of structures and limitations, responsibilities, tests in life and hardships, and how we handle those challenges. Saturn is also the ruling planet for the months the current months that we are beginning. Saturn's innate distrust of groups or large organizations could be for a good reason. We would all like to find a community of like-minded individuals to gather with, but too often egos get involved which prevent the good work for the group could otherwise be doing. I was following a group on Facebook that had some very interesting articles on historical issues and uh, typical spiritual issues that I've been following for years. And I happened to make a comment, not an opinion, mind you, just a matter of fact statement on a teaching that I had heard and did not say whether I believed it or not, but I thought it relevant to the subject matter. I was then informed by an obvious professor of life that my source was so nonsensical that anyone who would believe such things must be stupid. I congratulated him on his total grasp of human knowledge that he felt so comfortable correcting anyone. You would have thought I had said the church was right after all. I simply quoted a man who appears on Ancient Aliens who happens to be a rabbi. I would certainly defer to the rabbi's greater understanding of what's written in the Torah. The ego of thinking one knows better than another percentage-wise is greater amongst larger groups. Saturn gives us the strength to stand and study on our own 
and let your inner guide be your teacher because that's better after all anyway there's no ego involved there but your own so how did we get where we are spiritually certain religious groups going around bombing ancient sites because of what they represent that's different religious zealots whose sole purpose in life is to kill the infidel someone at one point in time decided that their traditions were the only correct way to god and everyone else needed to get on board with what their opinion was in truth there are many paths to god and enlightenment everyone is on their own path everyone is on their own timetable and no one has the right to tell you that you're wrong or that you belong on their path I heard this phrase on this show I was listening to and how fitting it is. Um, it was a Latin phrase that is mundus vult decepti ergo discipitur, which means the world wants to be deceived, so let it be deceived. Your current vibrational frequency gives you what you desire. Your thought patterns mimic what you focus upon. If you like to be angry, the universe will give you plenty to be angry about. Your consciousness aligns itself with your like energy and consciousness patterns from the universal consciousness that is like your own. If you change your vibration to a higher frequency, you align yourself with higher thought patterns. It's that simple. Change something about yourself for the better every day. Look at yourself as an outsider as you're thinking something negative about another person or something you saw and ask how or why you arrived at that point. What led you to your opinion? Do you think you have the right to tell another person how to think or what authority do you base yourself? Some people have an addictive type behavior, but never take that addictive behavior into being addicted to drugs. But the effect can be the same, addicted to anger, addicted to self-righteousness, addicted to belittling other people to make yourself feel superior. There's a parable that suggests before you pluck the thorn from your brother's eyes, remove the beam from your own. In other words, work out your own issues, period. Not before you start looking at someone else's, just your own. The spirit of hard glory governs the ego. Pod is governed by the planet Mercury, and Mercury out of alignment in your chart can be a good breeding ground for that sense of self-righteousness. Today in the Hebrew is the Rosh Chodesh, or new moon for the month of Shavat. The Torah portion for this new moon is the beginning of the story of Moshe and the gods sending him as his messenger to Pharaoh. In the story, God had purposely heard him Pharaoh's heart so that he would deny letting the people of Israel go because God wanted all the people to see what he would do for his people and what he would do against those who misused them. If one area of your life is trying to get back at people that hurt you, it's entirely not necessary. No matter what God is to you, we're all subject to the same universal laws. And the moon and the sun in Capricorn will both testify to the concept of we always reap that which we sow. There is nothing that you have to do. The universe takes care of it naturally. You can, however, get yourself into trouble if you try and get in the way of that by attempting revenge on your own. This is the, even though this is the new moon for the month of Shabbat, the moon and the sun currently sit in the sign of Capricorn. Uh, the month of Shabbat is Aquarius. When the sun moves into the month of Shabbat, does not determine when the new moon is. It certainly would be easier for me if it works that way, as we it can get confusing. The new moon coming at the end of the previous Hebrew month, and in the Torah, the new moon is the head of the month, but the sun rules the sun sign and what the Hebrew month is. Quoting from. Kabbalah.org, I believe, or no, LiveKabbalah.com. It says the Brie Yishkar, a Kabbalist from the 19th century, claims that Aquarius is the sign of Israel. 
The Torah tells us about Jacob, the patriarch, that his name derived from the word Aki, which means heel, due to the fact that when he was born, he held to his brother's heel, trying to come out first. The heel is the roughest and the lowest part of the human body, and it connects us to the earth. The Torah also tells us that after Jacob struggled all night with the angel, the angel was forced to bless him in order to be released, so he changed Jacob's name to Israel, which combined of the words Li and Rosh, meaning my head, or the heel was raised to be the head, and that indicates of the Aquarius's ability to transcend above boundaries and overcome limits. Aquarius people have no tolerance to the things that connect everyone else to the earth, habits and tradition and commitments. They have to exchange boundaries with freedom. The Bray Yishikar explains that the prime action of the bucket, which is Aquarius in Hebrew, is to pump and draw water. That is its role to draw from one place to another. And on Shabbat, it allows us to bring abundance and bliss from the upper worlds into our lives. So we can turn our focus from those negative vibrations into positive higher frequencies so that we can change our thought patterns and therefore change our creation. It's funny that the symbol for the month of Aquarius is the water bearer and the bucket, and the natal chart for the day resembles a bucket to me. Kabbalah teaches that the winter months have a symbol of the vessel representing the desire to receive. At the new moon, when the sun hasn't quite reached its sign that it's attributed to, we focus on the Hebrew letter that created its ruling planet. As we said earlier, the month of Shabbat's ruling planet is Saturn and the Hebrew letter Bet, which is the house. The letter Bet represents the 12th half on the Kabbalistic tree of life connecting the spirit of Keter with that of Bria. Here's Keter at the top of the tree. And here is Bina. The twelfth path also represents the Majus hard in the twelfth tarot, shown here. Keta represents the will for witness. Bina imparts the energies we need to comprehend ourselves. Also ruled by Saturn, highlights the area in which we need to practice persistence and focus in order to succeed. If you're in the middle of studying one tradition and keep getting sidetracked, get back to it. Alain Milo Duquet, in understanding Alistair Crowley's Toth Tarot book, said, The true self is the meaning of the true will. Know thyself through thy way. Calculate well the formula of thy way. The Magus, according to tradition, is the title of the second highest level of spiritual illumination that a human soul can attain, and a few of us come close. Knowing thyself has to include a greater understanding of why we make the choices that we do, which is the first step to a plan to learn how to avoid old habit patterns that get us into trouble. For the sphere of Keter, the sphere of destination, the crown, the beginning of whirling, the first mover which bestows the gift of life in all things and fills the universe, the divine Hebrew name is Echeya, which is I am, which translates to I am that I am, which also means I am will be what I will be. The color is bright, brilliant white. For the spirit of Bina, the divine Hebrew name is Yehovah Elohim. The color is dark brown or black. For the twelfth path, called Sanctifying Intelligence, the founder of primordial wisdom, 
the divine name is Aloha Elohim, goddesses or gods or the great mother. The color is yellow. The musical note is E. Symbols are the house and the wand. Living beings include the apes, the swallows, and the ibis. We have invited the great ape to our circle. And the god Toth. Areas that the 12th path can help you include dissolving creative blocks, learning to identify your emotional buttons, getting in touch with your own karmic issues, judging yourself, not to base your self-image on other people's opinions of you, understanding cycles and recognizing them in your life and in your world, recognizing that emotion powers thought, astral projection, the ability to see through things, increasing your communication with your spirit guides, being able to clearly recognize cause and effect by seeing the whole world picture. In his book, Scrying the Tree of Life, Chick Cicero wrote, transparency of the path implies a certain clarity that is needed for true revelation. It is the place of true prophecy or seership. This is not simply the lower psychic reflexes, but rather the pure and clear root of all higher spiritual visions. The path symbol is the infinity symbol. For more information on this writing or on the energies of the a new moon, including a link to the guided meditation on the path of Bet. Please see our blog at Marika's Moon Rituals at Wix.com. That information will also be provided at the end of this video. Thank you and wishing you all a blessed and happy new moon.